Hey friends, Richard at the Jam Space with another video about the Apple M1 iPad Pro. Three reasons why I went ahead and pre-ordered the iPad, but first if you could give me a comment, like, and especially a subscribe, help me get to my goal of 100 subscribers by the end of June, that would be awesome, really appreciate it. I'm going to try to really earn it. So. Um, Let's get into these three reasons. Now these aren't specs, not not really. It's not really a rundown of what's new with the, uh, the M1 iPad Pro. It's more personal user-based reasons. First reason, I'm an all-in iPad Pro user. I embrace its advantages, portability, touchscreen, Apple Pencil Stylus support, the video camera capabilities, and its tablet conversion to computing two-in-one device capability. That was a weird way to say that. Let's try that again. <laughs> I think I could say that better. <laughs> Just the two-in-one factor, the tablet computer. It's the best tablet, and it's a pretty dang good computer, too. The limitations, yeah, sure. I accept those as well, but I know that they're going to be improved upon. What are those limitations? Well, iPad OS, not the greatest file management, not the greatest multitasking, poor external display support. It's true. Limited ports, only one port on the device. You can get a secondary charging port if you get the Magic Keyboard. I, I do have that, so. Yes, they, these limitations are real, but not all of them are hardware-based. Most of them are software correctable, and I think that that's going to happen. But still, as it is now, the pros for me outweigh the cons of an iPad Pro. I'm never going back to being a MacBook Pro user. I, touch screen? I'm not giving that up, man. Sorry, like, stylus? I'm not giving that up. These things are meaningfully important. They actually are improvements that I don't want to part with. I have a great experience with the 2020 iPad Pro. What can I say? My one year of all-in iPad Pro user, it's not just my primary device. It is my solitary device. It's the only device I use. It goes with me everywhere. It's, that, it's the best computer I've ever owned. Man, I just love using the iPad Pro. I love the experience. So it's an A+. I know that those limitations are going to be addressed. I believe that they're going to be addressed soon. But even, even if they weren't, I can still live with the iPad Pro as my only device. It does do the job. Number two. Now, you've probably seen a lot of videos where there is a cr creator who's saying to you, Why? Why would you upgrade? Yeah. Don't get the 2021 if you've already got the 2020. Heck, if you've got the 2018, you don't need to upgrade, said the person who has a MacBook Pro 16 inch and an iMac desktop computer and who just uses their iPad Pro as like a secondary device. No, it, it, it's got so much room to grow. We don't need a faster chip. We don't need more RAM on the iPad Pro. It's perfect, wrong. Not if you use it like I do. Good for them, and I would say they shouldn't probably upgrade. They're not hitting limitations because they're not really pushing it. They might say, well, I I edit video in LumaFusion. How often do they do that? Is it their primary editing suite? Or do they go to their desktop computer or perhaps a 16-inch MacBook Pro 2019 or something something else that's really their workhorse and they're not really relying on their iPad Pro? I have to tell you this. Listen to me now. Here's the second reason. I'm hitting processing limits on the iPad Pro 2020 with the A12Z. This is a fact. Now, what does that look like? What do I mean? Well, I will fully admit that I'm using iMovie to edit these videos. Now, it may not be the most efficient program because Apple basically gives that software away for free with the iPad Pro. So they may not have put a lot of time into making sure that it was a really efficient program, streamlining its you know, resource management. 
but that's okay. It's sort of like it's simulating a larger program, a more pro program. So what I'm seeing is I'm seeing I'm editing 15 to 20 minute videos with with uh, two layers of 4K. I'm using the titles, um, the minor amounts of effects, and I'm using filters, you know, slowing the speed down, doing very, you know, the minimalistic type of things that you can do on iMovie. And what's happening is I'm experiencing some pretty severe lag in my longer videos where I've got, you know, two streams of video. To the point, I'm looking at a blank screen and I'm like trying to edit by sound. You know, it slowed me down on two videos in particular where I can say by a couple of hours. That isn't something that I'm looking forward to doing in the long run. So yeah, I could probably address it by getting um, LumaFusion and that's a more you know resource efficient program most likely. But like I said, other professional apps are gonna be coming out. I wanna do things like multi-track recording and I'm, I'm hitting a limit, I see it, I've experienced it, it's real for me. It's not going to work for me. There's a better device that's out there. The M1's 50% faster. There's I'm getting the 16 gigabyte version, so I'm going up from 6 all the way up to 16 gigabytes. It stands to reason that if I want to use these more professional apps that are likely to be coming in the future, I can't do it on a processor that's slow on iMovie. I can't. I can't say... Six gigabytes of RAM, definitely going to be good enough because I saw a few YouTubers say that it would be okay. Look, if they're not using it as their primary device, I don't even care what their opinion is. So make sure you know if they're actually using it as a primary device or not, right? Can't make your decisions based on people that are just like, oh, I've got everything. I get one new of everything. Oh, I don't really use that. I don't know. I, it's fine. I'm not going to be here on my everyday device changing how I'm gonna shoot a video so that uh, my my device doesn't hold me back. I'm gonna upgrade. I'm in a position where I'm gonna just make that decision. I'm all in on the iPad Pro. I've hit some limitations. There's a better device available. It makes sense for me. That's my second reason. And then the third reason why I'm gonna upgrade to the 2021 M1 iPad Pro is because I can get good value for my 2020 iPad Pro. So my situation is unique, let me explain it to you. My girlfriend, Kristen, I love you. She's really helped me a lot. Um, the Jam Space, if you don't know, it's a former 50 seat concert venue, live music kind of thing. I'm on, I'm on the stage right now. Um, we don't do that anymore, but before the pandemic thing happened, she would volunteer in the bar. Um, she helps me with my books, she, she does that still. Um, and also just doing the books, we came across a number of receipts for supply runs that she did. And guess what? She used her own credit card to pay for the supplies for the jam space events. And I owe her a significant amount of money. I don't want to leave that balance outstanding. I want to settle that debt. I want to pay her back. But you know how I could do that? I could just write her a check and say, here you go. But she is currently... It's really sad. She's struggling on a Asus 2016 Chromebook with like 64 gigabytes of storage. And she's got like hockey tape holding the screen together. She can't close it anymore, <laughs> you know. So here's an opportunity for me to just say, I owe you a significant amount of money. You've got a terrible computer. When she gets this 2020 iPad Pro, it's going to be just such an awesome upgrade for her. And she deserves it, and I can do that. She doesn't need to be editing video or doing the types of things that I, that I need to do on an iPad Pro. So for her, it's going to be so much better than what she has. It's going to settle my debt with her, and I'm going to get really good value for that 2020 iPad Pro. So I'm not going to take a big loss in parting with it. If I had to sell it to somebody for half of what it was worth and then buy a brand new iPad Pro, that would be that'd be a bad decision. If I said tr I had to trade it in to Apple's third party uh, partner that will take old devices, they're only offering like a third of the value. Do not do something like that, you know? 
wait until you find a buyer or a family member who is going to give you a fair price for your old iPad Pro. You know, don't rip yourself off because you want something so bad. Wait until it's a good time for you and it makes sense. I'm not advising people to just like be frivolous here, but if you can say all three of those things work for you, then you might be like me and it might be time to upgrade to this M1 iPad Pro. I'm basically paying off a debt and getting a new device. I could just pay off the debt and keep my old device, but why? Why when I can pay off the debt and get the new device? It doesn't really feel like I'm just losing money. It feels more like I'm getting an upgrade and my whole computing world is being upgraded. That's what it feels like. That's a no-brainer, right? It's a win-win. It doesn't feel like I'm paying off a debt. It feels like I'm getting something really cool. First reason, I love using the iPad Pro. I have only good things to say about going all iPad Pro if you're ready to jump in and make that commitment and you accept the limitations as they are. Secondly, I'm hitting limits on my 2020 iPad Pro. It makes sense. It does. It's, it's true. Don't believe all the hype about how awesome 2018 iPad Pros are. Not for everybody. Not for primary users, solitary users, professional users. And then the third reason is I'm not taking a big loss on getting rid of my old iPad Pro. I'm getting fair value in return for it. So it makes sense for me from those three standpoints. If you've got all three of them and they make sense, and you've got the disposable income and it doesn't hurt you to go ahead and order a 2021 iPad Pro, I would say don't feel bad about it. Go ahead and do it if it's something that you feel you need to do. Anyways, give me a comment below. Fight with me if you don't think iPad Pros are very good. Um, compliment me if you think that I've made a good point or two here. Love to get the discussion going. Give me a like. Uh, that'd be awesome with the algorithm likes that. And like I said, I want to get to 100 subscribers by the end of June. I feel like I feel like it's doable. And if you could go ahead and subscribe, I know it's possible. So thanks again, Richard here at the Jam Space. We'll see you in the next video.